Have you ever wondered why your iced coffee looks kind of like a nebula? I'm Nicole Sharp, and this is FYFD. You've probably noticed at some point that crazy turbulent motion that happens when you pour milk into tea or coffee. You're combining fluids with different densities, and that's a breeding ground for the Rayleigh-Taylor instability. Let's look at a simplified example. Imagine you have two fluids sitting on top of one another. We're on Earth, so gravity is acting downward. If the upper fluid is less dense than the lower fluid, nothing happens. But say we switch them so the upper fluid is denser and heavier than the lower one. The lighter fluid is going to rise while the heavier fluid sinks. This interface between the two fluids is going to get distorted, and because the heavy fluid will keep trying to sink while the lighter fluid rises, the interface is only going to get more and more distorted as time goes on. This is what Lord Rayleigh realized when he first described the instability. Later on, G.I. Taylor recognized that the same thing happens if you accelerate a less dense fluid into a more dense one, which is what happens in underwater explosions or the aftermath of supernovas. There are a few distinctive shapes that show up in the earliest stages of the Rayleigh-Taylor instability. Here you can see how a single finger along the interface forms into a spike and then a mushroom shape. These fractal swirls appearing along the edge are actually another instability, the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability. Very quickly, the fluid motion becomes incredibly complex and turbulent, which is good for mixing milk into your drink, but it makes it hard to catch what's going on. Let's try to slow things down some. Here I filled two cups with a mixture of corn syrup and water. Corn syrup is only a little denser than water, but it's about a thousand times more viscous. If you do the full mathematical analysis of the Rayleigh-Taylor instability, viscosity does have some effects, but mostly what it does is decrease the growth rate of the instability. In other words, it slows everything down. The yellow glass contains the denser mixture. Now we remove the barrier and watch what happens. Even with the high viscosity, things go quickly. Fingers of the lighter blue fluid push upward and the yellow fluid sinks. The fingers deform, overturn, and mix. The high viscosity keeps the Reynolds number low and prevents turbulence, which is why the mixed green region isn't very wide. With milk and coffee, the lower viscosities allow more turbulent mixing, which is why they don't settle out the way the corn syrup does. So, there you have it. Next time you're enjoying a cup of coffee, be sure to keep an eye out for the awesome fluid dynamics and the Rayleigh-Taylor instability going on in your cup. I've included some links over here to a few videos of my favorite examples of Rayleigh-Taylor instability. Uh, the University of Cambridge has an awesome laboratory demo and Mark J. Stock over here has some great numerical examples. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and follow along on FYFD to learn more about the physics of fluids every day. Thanks!